Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Well, friends, last week, Pastor Horner preached about fear. And he asked us to consider what our fears are as he reflected on his own. So what is my greatest fear? I knew as soon as he asked the question, in fact, I actually said it out loud. My greatest fear is being seen for who I really am. My greatest fear is exposure of my flawed self, my failures, my weaknesses and my shortcomings. Essentially, my fear is vulnerability. And not so ironically, that is our topic for today, a place to belong with vulnerability. Now, as I reflected on our story for today and on vulnerability in general, I realized that this might be one of the toughest sermons I've given in a while. And I mean tough for me, because I realized, friends, that in order to preach about vulnerability, I should probably be vulnerable. (laughs) And honestly, that's not something I enjoy doing as I get up to speak in front of hundreds of people this weekend. Maybe you can relate, because being, being vulnerable is probably something we all struggle with. So why? Why do we struggle with being vulnerable? Well, I told the staff this week uh, that they shouldn't be surprised when I mention Brene Brown in my sermon this weekend, because she is well known for her work with vulnerability. Well over 10 years ago, she gave an infamous TED Talk on vulnerability. And if you aren't familiar with Brene Brown or her work or this talk, I just encourage you to go home this morning and Google Brene Brown. And this is one of the first videos that will pop up on YouTube. It's well worth your listen. Now, Brene Brown is the renowned researcher and social social worker and, I would say, expert on vulnerability. And she would tell us that we avoid being vulnerable because, quote, vulnerability is uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. Vulnerability asks us to open ourselves up. It asks us to let go of control. Additionally, our society views vulnerability as weakness. And finally, Brene Brown would tell us that we avoid vulnerability because we don't believe that we are worthy of compassion, love, belonging, or empathy when we are vulnerable. I wonder if any of that resonates with you. Why do you struggle to be vulnerable? Now let's switch gears a little bit, friends, and ask the question you probably are all thinking. What does vulnerability have to do with our story for today? Well, spoiler alert, friends, the answer is everything. But let's talk about what's going on here in this, uh, in this story from John, because the context into which Jesus is speaking and who he is speaking to tell us everything we need to know to answer that question. First, what we hear in our gospel story for today isn't the whole story. We only hear part of chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, We don't hear verses 1 through 10, and we don't hear the story that precedes it in chapter 9. And our story for today has everything to do 
with what happens before. A man is born blind, and Jesus heals him of his blindness. Now, friends, in John's gospel, when Jesus performs a sign, a miracle, he always explains what that sign means afterward. Because Jesus knows that what he says, what he does, can easily be misinterpreted or misunderstood. And what you need to know, friends, is Jesus' signs in John's gospel always, always point to the abundant life a relationship with Jesus offers. Now, getting back to our story and the story that comes before it, yes, Jesus heals this man. But he does so much more than just that. Jesus sees this man, and John's gospel says just that. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man born blind from birth. Sure, simple. But Jesus was walking by friends, and he could have easily ignored this man. Surely, many people walked by this man every day and ignored him. But not Jesus. Jesus sees this man, truly sees this man for who he is. Jesus looks beyond the physical, beyond his vision, impairment. Meanwhile, his disciples can't get past this man's blindness. And they ask Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. And Jesus essentially answers them, that doesn't matter, guys. What matters is that this man experienced healing, wholeness, relationship, and love. Yes, Jesus heals this man, but he claims him and makes him one of Jesus' own. Other people rejected this man, but Jesus says, no, you belong here. You belong with me. You belong to me. You are my own. And these words and this action make all the difference in this man's life. Probably for the first time in his life, he experiences love and belonging. So our story about Jesus, the good shepherd... It's about how Jesus is welcoming this man into his flock. About how Jesus is claiming this man as his own. It is about how what will happen later, Jesus' death and resurrection, that will be done for this man too. Read all together as a whole story, it's about how Jesus looks past what we think makes us vulnerable, and he loves us anyway. When has someone seen you for who you really are? When have you experienced belonging? When have you felt accepted for who you are? When have you felt truly connected with the people in your life? Going back to Brene Brown, she would tell us that vulnerability is the key here. Quote, vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, and creativity. It is the source of hope, empathy, accountability, and authenticity. Friends, being vulnerable with others can change our lives for the better. Being vulnerable with others connects us to one another. It builds relationship, and it builds community. Last week, Pastor Horner quoted the eminent philosopher, and I'm going to take that a step farther, and I would say the Shakespeare of our time, 
Taylor Swift. You're laughing, but she is a good example of why vulnerability is important and how it gives birth to connection and authenticity. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Swifty. Friends, Taylor Swift connects with her fans because she's willing to be vulnerable. Taylor Swift has turned vulnerability into a superpower, and her vulnerability has created a community. That's why we call ourselves Swifties, after all. You might know, friends, that on Friday, she uh, released her 11th studio album, or maybe 12th. There's still uh, some commentary about that, I'm sure. And it's probably her most vulnerable album yet. And in all seriousness, friends, I have also experienced how vulnerability creates community and how it builds connections and relationships. I try to remind myself that while vulnerability is hard and uncomfortable, pushing past those feelings is worth it. Because out of vulnerability, something beautiful can happen. Several months ago, I stood in this same place and I told you about my struggles as a new mom and as a pastor. I'm getting emotional because I hear the children in the room and it's just such a beautiful thing, friends. Um, And I told you about the many moments of doubt that I have felt as I'm trying to balance these really two important jobs at once. And I shared with you how overwhelming it has uh, been for me and how I've learned to advocate for myself and for my family and ask for help. And I don't think I have ever felt so vulnerable in my life. Though it was scary, some might say risky even, that experience of being vulnerable created connection. That vulnerability allowed people, allowed you, to see the real me. And honestly, at my most vulnerable, I have never felt so loved and cared for. And so many of you connected to those feelings I was lifting up. And you told me about your experiences. And friends, I learned that God works through our vulnerability. And God creates a community and makes us a flock. In our story for today, friends, Jesus reminds us that he is the good shepherd. He reminds us that we are a part of a flock. He reminds us that we are his own. And because we belong to Jesus, friends, we are seen for who we really are. And when Jesus looks at us, he doesn't see our failures or our weaknesses or our shortcomings. Jesus sees us as beloveds. He sees us as God's children. Jesus sees us as worthy of compassion and love, of empathy and belonging. And friends, Jesus looks at you. And Jesus says to you, you belong to me. You belong with me. You are loved. You are protected. You are claimed. And you are enough. Amen.